two of the most affordable mini LED gaming monitors has just hit the market with 384 and 576 local dimming zones. Today we have the Curry GN10 versus the KTC M27 T20 Rev2. Hi friends and welcome to Victor's Reality. I have a wide variety of scenes from the unboxing to the actual zone count so we can really see those local dimming zones at work with pros and cons respectively on the Curry GN10 and the KTC M27 T20. Just because they're both mini LED doesn't mean they're the same and I can easily show you a couple of issues to help you make that awesome buying decision. Both can be had for $3.99 they're both a buy, and other than little nitpicks which I'll be able to show you here, you can't lose on whichever you decide to get. Through the holiday season, try to pay $3.99, but regardless, even at $4.99 MSRP, both of these monitors give Alienware and Dell a run for their money, as with the introduction of Mini LED, it's a whole new ballpark, and none of those other monitors can compete with the impact that these two monitors give you. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button friends, so more people can see it to help them make that awesome buying decision, and know what's out there, so they can save a ton of money. Consider subscribing if you want more information on both of these awesome monitors. We'll be showcasing a wide variety of Xbox and PlayStation 5 gaming, 4K with local dimming testing, once I show you how to update both of these monitors. We have here the Curry GN10, a 27-inch 1440p 240Hz mini LED gaming monitor, display HDR1000 support for those amazing peak SDR and HDR highlights, with a 1 millisecond greater gray response time, with 95% of the DCI-P3 color coverage, on the KTC, we have a 27-inch 165Hz 1440p mini LED gaming monitor with HDR1000 support, also with a 1 millisecond greater gray response time, but with 93% of the DCI-P3 color coverage, 2% less. Will you be able to notice? Let's find out today. Now the main reason why you're getting these specific mini LED monitors is the 384 zones on the Curry, and on the KTC we have 576. But more doesn't necessarily mean better, while less doesn't mean it's not as bright. The unboxing was really straightforward. The packaging was sufficient. Everything was well taken care of, well protected. The monitor screens actually had protection in front, not like Samsung that doesn't do that. You do get a lot of value, especially at $399. Now the stands are a bit different, as you can see on the Curry, which is white, which will be on the left side of this video. It's just a different stand design. You can tilt, pivot, and swivel. It is height adjustable, the same as the KTC, but the stand looks different. I just think it looks really cool. While on the KTC, it looks a lot like the Cooler Master. Nothing special, but really minimalistic. It blends in easily with your desk, compared to the V-shape of the Curry. Both have LEDs on the back of the monitor. Here we have the menu on both monitors. In the future, I will showcase each specific monitor, but since this is a versus video, I just wanted to put it up here so you can get the most information when deciding which one to buy. On the KTC, you do need to update to get that HDR and local dimming to work at the same time. And for next generation consoles, I was able to get the 4K to work, so both accept a 4K signal acceptance, and of course the native 1440p, but the HDR with local dimming, you need to update the KTC to the newest firmware. And I'll bring that to you very soon. So don't let that be a deal breaker. The new firmware does fix it. And right now, I have not had any issues on either monitor. No black screens, no HDR issues other than the local dimming on the KTC. But if you want that information of next generation consoles on each monitor, wait for that video to 100% confirm. You can also check the description down below and in the comments as I will update this video in the future once more testing has been completed. Here I'm raising the ISO so you can better see on the left, the Curry has 384 zones, while on the right, the KTC has 576. And if we count the zones on the left, you can see 24 horizontal and 16 vertical. 24 times 16 equals 384. While on the right with the KTC, we have 32 horizontal and 18 vertical, totaling 576. But not necessarily does more mean better, or does less mean inferior. I'll be able to show you that in a little bit. But one thing I have been able to discover there seems to be some kind of small issue with the KTC. Now the way I test, I think outside the box. I'm not gonna just show you local dimming and call it a day. For this test, I raise the brightness all the way up and I also raise the black equalizer all the way up, also raising the ISO on the camera to capture this halo effect. The reason why I'm showing you this is because I wanna show you the way the monitor handles local dimming. It could be the algorithm or the panel quality. It's not a defect because I can erase this issue with the transition of the mini LED zones being more pronounced on the KTC, in every single scene I've been able to throw at it, this is also what I've been able to see. This expanded halo around the mini LED zone. As you can see, the Curry doesn't show anything, but the KTC, maybe because it's brighter, which visually it does seem so, is showcasing this halo. I'm showing you a variety of scenes so you can see it happens with a square or a circle. So an SDR or HDR peak highlight, worst case scenario, 
this halo may pop up. But if I put everything back to normal, contrast set respectively, so nothing's overblown. Brightness though is still at 100%. The black equalizer is at zero. You can see what happens. Everything goes back to normal. I've tested a wide variety of monitors and none of the monitors has shown that halo look, that halo ring around the mini LED. It might be just the way the KTC is displaying it. I have not been able to see that ring or halo ring in any media from entertainment to gaming to browsing. But this is a versus video and I gotta show you the differences of how the panel handles that mini LED. Now talking about the mini LED transitions, if you look closely, maybe because there's more on the KTC versus the Curry when the panning or transition happens of the actual zone, it's more pronounced on the KTC. I don't see any of this in normal content, not in gaming or movie viewing, but I gotta show you friends to help you make that awesome buying decision. Now this is where things get interesting. Both mini LED monitors can get very bright. Remember, these are display HDR 1000 certified, full screen SDR and HDR brightness reaching 500 plus nits. That is crazy, all while retaining that deep contrasty look. Of course, that mini LED can provide. Here with the Mystery Shack, you can easily see the KTC wins overall. Everything looks more punchy, brighter. The shadow detail is much more pronounced. You can easily see the trees on the left and right side. While on the Curry, maybe due to the algorithm, the shadow detail is lost on the left and right sides. Overall, the picture looks muted. But now with this scene, everything is equal. The KTC still wins, as I have the color tone on the KTC to warm. While on the Curry, it's also on warm. In a little bit, I'll be able to show you a trick I've been able to find on the Curry to fix the color and give the overall image at least a notch up in that contrasty look. These are both on vanilla firmware, and since Curry is not a well-known brand, at least not in the States, there's certain things that we have to discover on our own to get the most out of these awesome monitors. Starfield looking beautiful on mini LED. Here the KTC overall wins. You can see the star map in the background more on the KTC, while the player's legs look much more vibrant. But the Curry is showing a better SDR peak highlight with the fire from the rocket. These are the things I've been able to see. They both trade blows. Overall, the KTC to me is better, but just because the Curry has 384 zones doesn't make it inferior and sometimes surpasses the KTC, especially in a peak SDR highlight like this. This is another simple image showcasing that each zone count look very similar. One does not destroy the other, but if we move on to a trailer, say Star Wars or the Starfield trailer, you can easily see here, friends. I would say 90% of the time the KTC wins, Overall, a brighter image, better peak highlights, but a lot of the time the Curry, I would say 10% of the time, does exhibit a brighter SDR highlight, say like here on the watch. So it's things like this that really puzzle me. I've been able to see this in a variety of gaming. I honestly think you can't lose on whichever you decide to get, but I'll say it again, friends. To me, the KTC overall has a brighter, fuller image. That 2% DCI-P3 color difference really can't be seen here. With this scary image of the classroom, the Curry is showcasing a higher SDR peak highlight with the light from the door. But on the KTC, overall the image is brighter. You can easily see the differences, friends, both at 100% brightness. These are the things I'm talking about. This is real world testing. Here with the Neon Light City, the KTC is showcasing a brighter image, but they're so close to each other, it's really hard to tell. Now, this is the fix I wanted to showcase on the Curry. What you're seeing here is both are on warm one, 100% brightness, and the KTC is showing a real warmer picture. While on the Curry, it still looks kind of bluish, I'd say. Here we have a side-by-side -side of the Curry. On the left, we have Warm 1, 100% brightness. While on the right, you can see by the menu, this is what I've been able to find. Brightness at 100%, but if you switch the color to User, and I would say add one point to each color, you can just do it to red, but for this video, I did it to the red, green, and blue. The picture seems elevated, like it unlocked the contrast or the image brightness a bit. I hope you can see by the side-by-side. -side. For the Curry, if you get this monitor, I would recommend you keeping it on user. Sure, you can mess around with the RGB, but just to get things started, just add one to each to get the image to look more contrasty, brighter, and to look redder, meaning to look actually warm. And like I said earlier, sometimes the Curry has a brighter SDR and HDR peak highlight. Look at this image. On the left, we have the battleship, say space station, and the actual ship. Those images are really popping with the highlights. While on the KTC, it's not really popping. It's bright, but the impact is not like the Curry. But I'm sure you can see what we're looking at. On the KTC, the overall background is elevated. The shadow detail is there. And that's what you need. You need to be able to see what the game is showcasing. While on the Curry, the background is muted. The peak highlights on the KTC are outstanding. Look how crazy bright that is. Everything is just popping out of the screen. Now sure, the Curry is showcasing sometimes a brighter SDR impact highlight, but look at that KTC with that brightness. 
They really trade blows. It's sometimes on the left, sometimes on the right. Mortal Kombat 11 on the PC. The image looks better, brighter, much more impactful on the KTC. The only advantage I would say the Curry has is the 240 Hz. Friends, I make these versus videos to help you make that awesome buying decision. And in this specific video, I would say the KTC M27 T20 is the better buy. But both of these monitors can be had for $399. The KTC to me is a better overall value, as after the update, HDR and local dimming will work perfectly. Today we showcase the Curry GN10 versus the KTC M27 T20 384 versus 576 zones. I hope you found this video helpful friends. If you did find it helpful, please hit that like button so more people can see it to help them make that awesome buying decision. Consider subscribing if you want more information and future updates on each of these monitors. Affordable mini LED is finally here and they're ready to be showcased. Thanks for watching friends. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys next time.